Hey everyone, and welcome to Broadcast is Love. This is a podcast where we talk about what life looks like when we decrease our name and increase God's name because it's all about Jesus living life on purpose for him. Today we have on Kelsey Wiseman. She's the owner and creator of the Crafted Makery, and she makes polymer clay earrings here in Northwest Florida. You send them all over the nation, right, Kelsey? That's right. That's amazing. And I'm so happy to have you on. You're at the farmer's market on the weekends and you're just so nice and you have the best smile. I'm so glad to have you on. How are you today? Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. Thank you for having me. Um, I, I've been great. I'm just busy working in my studio today. I love it. You're working in your studio today. How cool for everyone listening. We're like, that was so cool. You're working in your studio. <laughs> I love the pictures you post online of your studio. So we know that you have not done earrings forever. How did you get started doing this? So I started specifically working with polymer clay. Um, it's coming up on two years now. Um, I started in December, 2019. I picked it up and um, I pretty much like played with every medium there is I've done some photography in the past I've done some um just like painting and things like that nothing like painting like I took a degree I have a degree or anything but just like painting some canvases and when I found this medium uh polymer clay in December 2019 uh something clicked and it was just like I I fell in love with it and it sounds kind of strange but um it was the possibilities are endless and um so I started uh, in December 2019, officially launched my business in January of 2020, which what a great time to start a business, right? Um, right. I didn't know what was coming. The Lord knew, but I yes. did not. And um, so I launched out and uh, that's when I started uh, working with Polymer Clay officially and, and launched the Crafted Makery was in uh, January of 2020. So that's how everything kind of got started. Um, and I was teaching at the time, actually. Um, Yes, which is so interesting. When I first met you, you, I was just so interested in you because you've got this booth set up at the farmer's market with these earrings that you've created. And I'm like, look at her, look at this girl right here. Kelsey didn't know you then (laughs) making these earrings. I'm like, I don't know what you're making, but I'm going to buy some earrings because I want to wear these. You know, it's like (laughs) almost proud of your area for this woman who has created these beautiful earrings. You know, I, I wanted to buy some, but that's how we met. And you had your earrings out and they're gorgeous, Kelsey. I mean, they're artwork. Thank you. Thank you. How did you get the inspiration for these? Because some of the earrings, like the flowers that you make, they are artwork, artwork. You are creating good stuff. How did you get started with these detailed designs? Well, thank you. That's too so kind. Um, I, well, I started out with like trying to find my style. Um, when I first started polymer clay, wasn't super big in the U S and so I had to, um, kind of research, you know, like what are people making? Like, what is, yeah. what is my staff? Cause I want to be different and have unique things. And so, um, I started out just trying like everything across the board, kind of like I tell people, I just like throw spaghetti at the wall and like see what sticks, but really, um, no yeah, way. When it came, when I, when that came to first grading, it was just like, I want to see what people like. And cause I could honestly, I, my style, I've never been able to really peg it down. Um, I would wear bright colors and I would wear neutrals. And so trying to figure out what people like, but yeah. also mix that with what I like to create. And, um, when it came to like the in, intricate kind of designs, um, my, uh, I actually make, I say me, my husband helps me with this, but we make our own cutters. And so I was able, like, once we uh, branched into that area of it, it's like a whole different arm of the industry, I guess, but um, able, being able to make our own like intricate designs with like the little indentions and stamping and things like that. That's when the doors just blew wide open. And I was like, oh gosh, the possibilities are completely endless. And so that's kind of, I guess I can't really find an inspiration, but just having those tools, I I was able to transfer designs that I had in mind and put them finally into clay. And so inspiration comes in waves um, for specific designs, like seasonal things is different like that. Um, But yeah, that's, that's kind of how I got into the more intricate things. Um, But yeah, there's, so many possibilities. <laughs> yeah. I love the seasonal earrings because 
they are so cute. Like for Halloween, your little ghost, they were so <laughs> cute. Do you have anybody who orders from you from outside of the United States? Or are you, have you, are you just like United States? Cause I know you're on Etsy. I have actually I have my own website. And so I do, but I do ship right now. I, I actually just opened shipping to Canada. So you're at like the first one to hear that. Really? Um, cool. Yeah. I, um, I haven't like officially announced it, but it's there. Whether you're ready for anyone. Um, I had a friend in Canada reach out to me and she was like, Hey, can I buy some of your earrings? And, um, I was like, yes, please let me test out shipping. And so I offered to cover her shipping and, uh, we, we got it to work. And so I've shipped my first order to Canada. I've shipped to, um, I just got an order from a friend in Guam, which oh is goodness. technically still the U S but it's overseas. Um, yeah. but it's been really cool to see like Hawaii, different places. Um, my goal is to officially like one day ship, have shipped at least one order to every, every state, but it's been neat to see like how far God has taken these little earrings. Oh my goodness. Okay. So here's what we want to do. This podcast being released it. Okay. So we talked earlier about it being the 99th or the 100th episode. I'm not really sure if it's the 99th or the 100th episode. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Like I was going to be cute and be like, it's our hundredth episode. Da, 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 da. But for you, for you, who's listening, if you all would like to Kelsey, if you want to, I would love to give away a pair of your earrings. We have people who listen all over the world. Um, I'm not really sure about the shipping situation, but I want to pay for a pair of your earrings. Um, the Luna pair, it has the sunshine on it. And, um, I want to pay for the shipping on that. And I would love to do a contest and have people follow your Instagram, which is the crafted makery. And it's spelled, yeah. you know, T H E C R A F T E D M A K E R I E. If you all would please follow Kelsey on her Instagram and just comment on one of her posts that you listen to her on broadcast is love. That's the only way that I can find a way to connect, you know, you yeah. during the contest, you know, for whoever's listening, just uh, put in any of her comments, you know, something great about her earrings and put that you listen to her on broadcast is love. And, um, what we'll do Kelsey is maybe your husband can select a winner from your post. And I would be more than happy to buy them one of your earrings, the Luna pair. I love the Luna. Awesome. That sounds great. Yay. Yay. We'll celebrate, celebrate. You go girl. I love it. And you used to be a photographer. So you're like taking pictures of your earrings. If y'all want to see her earrings, feel free to go on her website. Like she said, and then on her Instagram as well, she's got fun videos and pictures and you can see some of the behind the scenes of Kelsey's work. Um, when you're there on Instagram, you're going to see some of her posts about giving back. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about while talking to you is that you're making earrings and you're also giving back. And as for a Christian, whoever's listening to this and you're a woman, I just want you to be encouraged by whatever you are creating. You know, we want it to be a good thing. We want it to be good for others. Earrings are a good thing. You know, I think with my job with insurance, you know, health insurance, it's a good thing. And so we want to be used by God in our position to broadcast his love. And I'm going to ask you about how you all are giving back, but I wanted to read the scripture. We've had it on before, but I wanted to read it again because it's talking about women who supported Jesus's mission and his disciples. Do you mind if I read it real quick, Kelsey? Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. So it's a little bit longer, um, but it has so much meaning in it. It's about women who supported Jesus's mission. So uh, verse one, and it starts in chapter eight of Luke. It says, after this, Jesus traveled from one city and village to another. He spread the good news about God's kingdom. The 12 apostles were with him. Also, some women were with him. They had been cured from evil spirits and various illnesses. These women were Mary, also called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out. Joanna, whose husband, Kusha, which I always mess that up, so please forgive me, Kusha, Kusha, was Herod's administrator, Susanna, and many other women. Okay, this is it. Like, listen in. This is so good. They provided financial support for Jesus and his disciples. So like the women were supporting Jesus's mission. And I just think that's really cool to say that these were women who supported God's work. And it doesn't matter, you know, where you are, you can create something 
to give back. And you are doing that. And I just think that's so cool. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing now and what you've been doing with making earrings and giving back. I guess it kind of starts like with from the beginning of uh, when I started, I launched into this business full time, which um, I told you that I taught, uh, I taught kindergarten for a few years. And uh, when I felt the Lord like pressing on my heart to, to branch out and to move into this full time, I'd been doing it um, at the same time as teaching. Um, I'd come home in the evenings and I would work until like midnight and then I would go to bed and get up. And um, I knew that the Lord was just gradually shifting things in my heart. Um, but when I went full time with clay and this business, I, I had that longing in my heart of how can I use this as a ministry? Um, because I knew that there was something there, you know, God wouldn't, he wouldn't call me to this if he didn't have something. And re- it's actually just a recent, um, kind of answer to prayer really, um, of just me asking, you know, Lord, what, what's a way I can use this. And, um, it started in October with breast cancer awareness month. And I thought, what's a way that I can use my gifts um, that the Lord has given me to, to, you know, help people and um, be, be a light. Um, And my mom actually suggested, oh, why don't you do some breast cancer earrings? And I had someone ask me if I was going to do like pink earrings, pink pumpkins. And I thought, you know what, I'll start with that. And so um, I reached out to a local lady um, who makes, um, zipper adapted port shirts for uh, cancer patients in general, her mother had cancer. And so, um, or her mother, I think was on dialysis. And so that's why she had started making them. And then she has been able to minister to others. And I thought, I would love to be a part of that and come alongside it and use, you know, earrings and, you know, someone supports, gets a pair of earrings. They, their money goes to support, you know, other people who are um, going through a really hard time. And so I reached out to her and um, she actually just messaged me today. The orders, I'm going to pick it up. Like but by now, everything should be delivered by the time this airs. But um, that just kind of opened a door and I saw, wow, okay, the Lord is going to use this and definitely all glory to him because he's the one that, you know, brought the people and put the ideas and the suggestions and opened the doors as I moved forward with it. And um, then this month I had a customer reach out to me um, from Harvest Christian Center in Pensacola. She reached out to me um, last month and she found out that I was doing these breast cancer earrings um, and her, she had like a a loved one had had breast cancer. And so she said, um, I would like to purchase these. And then she's like, you know what? I actually am part of this ministry that's launching next month. Uh, which was November and that it's adoption awareness month. It was orphan Sunday. And I was wondering if you would want to design a collection. And I was like, wow, Lord, he's already, he's already bringing people and, you know, to me. And that's the amazing thing is that if you just open yourself up to what the Lord has and like lean in is a big thing. Um, I think a word that I'm going to choose for 2022 um, is just like leaning in and like, um, leaning into what God has and walking through the open door. And so he's, he brought this and just put it in my lap. And I'm just so, so grateful for the opportunity to be able to uh, raise money to that goes straight to this ministry and they um, support local foster and adoptive families uh, as they welcome these sweet children into their home. Um, And it's a way too that I can at a distance, you know, help children, because that was something I did with teaching, you know, such like a direct thing. Um, but when I knew, uh, I mean, it was transitioned into clay. I was like, well, what do you want me to do? How can I turn this into a ministry for you? And he answered that prayer. And so I would love to be able to keep doing this. And I think the Lord, you know, as long as I keep giving him glory and, and, you know, keep using it for him and have the right heart that I'm praying that he will bring more people and more uh, opportunities my way to be able to support. Um, And I think he'll do that as we give him our talents. He, you know, turns it into more just like the boy with the, you know, the fish and the bread. Like he takes that, what little we have, if we, if we're willing to offer it to him and he turns it into more and it's definitely no, no praise belongs to me whatsoever. God has opened these doors and he has brought these opportunities to me. And I'm, I'm looking forward to 2022 and to see, um, you know, what, 
what thing, what other ways I can give back, um, using earrings of all things. (laughs) That's so good that you said like the boy who brought his lunch to Jesus. It's like, this is what I have. This is what I have. That is so good. I was reading a book the other day. I wish I could remember what the book was called, but it was saying, um, you know, if you've ever been in a circle of Christians and they ask a question, maybe it's a small group. Hey, what Bible character are you like? You know, and one of them, Mm -hmm. you know, in the book, it said, what if we said we are like the little boy who gave our lunch, whatever we had to God. And I think that's such a cool question because whatever I have to God, I want to be like that little boy, you know, who's like, this is Mm -hmm. what I have. And it may not seem like much to you or to the boy or, you know, to whoever, but what matters is your heart. And that's what you were talking about. How's our heart and what you were just talking about, how you were so willing and obedient to do what you do for Jesus. I want to read Isaiah. It's um, chapter one, verse 19. And it says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Like you shall eat the good of the land. Like it's going to be good. And that's what it started with. With you, it was a prayer. And you're like, Lord, how can I be used? How can I do this for you? And it says like, if you are willing and obedient, like you're ready to walk in that, you shall eat the good of the land. So I am so grateful to be talking to you today because you're eating the good of the land and um, we're able to hear and be encouraged by that. And so I just want to encourage whoever's listening, start with a prayer. Kelsey's story is such a great example. God, use me today for your glory. I want to be like that little boy who gave what he had to Jesus to feed the 5,000 people or 4,000, maybe it was four or five. It was thousands of people. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Not a Bible scholar. What encouragement do you have for somebody listening after you've just heard that about being willing and obedient? Is there anything you can say to encourage listeners to do what they do for Jesus? Yeah, I I think just being willing um, and open surrender it's been a, always have been a big struggle for me. And so I know I'm not alone in that. And just yeah. being, being open-handed, like living life open-handed, um, we tend to just clutch onto things so tightly and it's easy. It's even easy to do like when God gives you a dream and you're like, okay, start this business. And you step out into that mm. over time we, as he, simple humans, like we can just like start to close our hands and like want that, want that control yeah. And I could even sense that in, in my, you know, my own self and like, okay, Lord, I need to, he's going to start either. I'm going to open my hands or he's going to pry them open. And so just living, living life with open hands and asking God, you know, what do you want me to do? And it may not happen right away. Um, God has a reason, you know, why he has, you know, as you wait for certain things, um, yeah. but he's going to bring it and trusting in his timing and living with open hands is what I encourage people to do because our, I mean, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And when we lean into that and lean into the dreams that God gives us in our heart, he's going to make something of it. And if we're just willing to do that, he, he's going to return that um, and use us for his glory. That's so good. Trust in his timing and living with open hands. What a hard thing to do, but what an easy mm-hmm. thing to say. You know what I mean? Like, Lord, I'm going to trust in your timing. I am living right now with my hands open. I'm driving, but my mind is open. You know, my hands are on the wheel, (laughs) but my mind is open. Lord, I give you my life, you know, dying to ourselves, picking up our cross daily and following him. That's so good. Um, I'm so encouraged by you, Kelsey. I love just like the resting pace in your voice and the energy that you bring with the words that you say. It's so good. Like it's such a calming conversation yet. So encouraging. So thank you so much for just sharing what God has on your heart. And I wanted to ask you, like I ask every guest, what's your favorite Bible verse that's helping you in this season? So I, um, I, when you asked me that, um, ahead of time, I thought about several popped into my head, but, uh, just recently, as I approach this busy season um, and just new opportunities that the Lord has been giving me um, second Timothy one, seven specifically uh, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind that that verse has just been um, 
just to stake in the ground for me, like to hold on to, you know, and the Lord just gives me these little nuggets and um, a verse, it's a verse that I've read countless times and memorized, you know, in college and things like that. But when you look at, when I went to study that passage, um, Paul is talking to Timothy and he's encouraging him. Um, and I like read through some commentaries and thought it was really cool um, how one of them said like he's encouraging him and the verse before says, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And oh, that's good. Um, he's talking about, he's telling Timothy, maybe he knew Timothy was kind of shy and he needed help in that area, but Paul's encouraging him to be bold, go for it. Um, you know, God is, has given him this gift. And like in this instance, he's speaking of spiritual gifts. Um, but it was just encouraging to know, like, that's what God says to us. He, he says to us, he's given us the, those three things. He's not, well, he's not given us a spirit of fear. Yeah. Um, the fear as we go forth um, and we, you know, use the gifts that God has given us, yeah. um, which is not a passive thing. And that's something else is, you know, he's encouraging Timothy to go for it. Um, you know, to stir up the gift of God, to use it, not just sit around and, you know, oh, I have this gift. We have to go out. We have to be moving and and using that gift. And um, he's, mm. but when we feel fear in those moments, that spirit of fear is not from God. It's natural to feel it, um, but it's not from God. And so he can give us the strength to overcome it. And then he says, God has given us those three things, the, the power, which is power of God to be bold for him, yeah. um, love the love of Christ to serve others. And then a sound mind, which is something I need a lot <laughs> is a calm and self-controlled mind. And yeah. that was just such an encouragement to me because I, I can tend to be uh, shy, <laughs> which um, people would meet me now are probably like, wait, you're not, you're not shy, but um, I do tend to be kind of more reserved and in the Lord, you know, like, Oh my goodness, Lord, I don't know how I can talk to people in person. And then he he spins that around and and that is just so encouraging to me when I do get to talk to people now and and mm-hmm. you know at markets and things like that. And um just knowing that Timothy's not the only one that struggles with being shy and he needed a little bit out of encouragement from Paul, uh, maybe in that area, and knowing that that's what God says to me is to go for it, go for the dreams that I put in your heart. Um, and then I, you know, he gives us the power. He gives us his love and, um, and a sound mind as we move forward with those, the dreams and goals that he's given us. Yes. And that is something to celebrate like you are doing. You're coming on this podcast. You are telling us what you are creating and you're giving the glory back to God. And I'm so thankful that you're giving us this example because like you're telling us, you know, God gives us power, love and self-discipline. And that is amazing that you're coming on here and sharing that. And I had no idea you were shy. Like when I see at the markets, you're like, Hey, (laughs) what's going on? And then the videos, like the reels you do are so creative. I mean, that's awesome. So I just think for whoever's listening, what encouragement to hear, you know, that God gives us power and love and a sound mind and self, you know, in some translations, it says Mm -hmm. self-discipline, you know, sound mind, self-discipline. And then it says in verse eight, so do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord. Uh, So, I mean, and it keeps going, but I just think that's such encouragement for whoever is listening to do what you do for Jesus. Don't be ashamed of what he's doing in you. Don't be ashamed of the gifts and talents that he's put in you and give the glory to him, you know, not to yourself. Don't say, look what I did. (laughs) You know, it's like, there are ways to give it back and give it back and giving back to the community through local programs is what you are doing. And that is a humble servant of God. And I'm so grateful to hear from you. So is there anything else that you want to share? Thank you for sharing your verse that's helping you in this season. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, if I would share anything else, I would just say an encouragement to those who maybe they look at their their calling and it's not necessarily what we would deem in the Christian world as like ministry. Um, I know that was something that growing up, I was like, if you're not in, you know, you're not working at the church, then it's not ministry, but that's so not true. We yeah. live every day as like as disciples of the Lord and we are on mission. And mm-hmm. so be encouraged that whether you sell earrings or, you know, you're selling health insurance or um, my husband's a graphic designer, 
like whatever you're doing, if you are a Christian and you're a believer, you are on mission and God, it may not be an obvious way, you know, but you're somewhere out there. Someone's watching you and you're a testimony for the Lord. He will use those talents that he's given you as long as you just keep living life with open hands. Yes. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Isaiah yes. 1 19. So good. Yes, 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 yes. Um, thank you so much, Kelsey. You're awesome. Don't forget to follow them. Um, how do we connect with you? I know you have a website and social media. So how do we connect with you, Kelsey? Yeah. So you can connect. Um, Instagram is where I hang out. So I tell people, um, that's just my handle is at the crafted makery. Um, and then my website is the crafted All that's linked on my on my Instagram. So if you get there and you tap that little link, um, it'll take you right where you need to go with the website and things. And I do have a Facebook page too. I try to keep up with that. Um, but you can always message me on Instagram if you have questions or anything like that. But, um, and I, then at the market, I'm at a Pal Fox market every Saturday. Um, I'll be there. I try to take off like at least once a year. <laughs> as far right. As right. Life is. You just, you know, uh, you take off when you can, but I'll be there until Christmas or, until the weekend before Christmas, you come in and say hi. And uh, if you connect with my Instagram, you'll see the schedules too. I have some other markets. Awesome. Okay. Well, let's do this for the contest. Like we're deciding this right now, but December 10th would be a couple weeks for people okay. to go on your Instagram and just comment that, you know, something positive about the earrings, of course, and then just do the at broadcast his love just say that, you know, you heard about Kelsey on the podcast or just like tag it maybe with the sunshine. I don't know something where I can yeah, be like, be okay, perfect. they've entered the contest. Um, and you can see that too. And then it will close December 10th. So that's a Friday. Yes. <laughs> and so there you go. It's, it's in the contest is over on Friday, December 10th. I will pay for the earrings and pay for the shipping. And I hope that these earrings, whoever gets them is an encouragement wherever you wear them to broadcast God's love, no matter where you are, no matter where your ears are. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. I have just enjoyed my time with you, Kelsey. Thank you so much for coming on and, and just sharing what God has on your heart. At the end of every podcast, we always pray, Father, decrease us and increase you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Dustin, one of the pastors at Grace Bible Church in Sebring, Florida. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Broadcast His Love with Ricky Van Stewart. I hope you will also consider joining us on our podcast as well. Our hope is to encourage you, inspire you, and compel you towards a closer walk with Jesus and one another. You can find us on every platform where podcasts are offered by simply searching for Grace Bible Church Sebring. Again, this is Pastor Dustin, and I hope to get to connect with you very soon. Hey, this is Mark Stockland, pastor and CEO for Haiti Bible Mission in Jeremy Haiti. If you'd like to follow along with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti, you can check us out at HaitiBibleMission.org. You can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We'd love to get you guys connected with what we're doing in Jeremy Haiti and how you can partner with us to live the difference, to help empower leaders to transform communities. God bless you guys and have a great day. Hi, y'all. This is Nan Charland, the owner of the Laurel Oak Inn Bed and Breakfast in Gainesville, Florida. You can find the Laurel Oak Inn on the internet at laureloakinn.com or Facebook and Instagram, Laurel Oak Inn. Until we meet you in person, we certainly hope you're enjoying life to its fullest. <laughs> Bye,